I tell you why only with culture we can get to the goal we want, to get to the goal that we have a sustainable world, that we save the world. And I show you that we have done quite a lot already and that we have successes and we can manage it. Um, if you look at these pictures, you think it looks romantic because it's this nice uh, sky there. But uh, this was a region of the Ruhr 40 years ago, uh, or 60 years ago, because there was a lot of industry, a lot of pollution, emissions to the air, emissions to the water. And on the right side, you see um, the dead trees because they were killed by the acid rain, by the coal power plants emissions, which were sulfur acid, and they you know, destroyed all the life in the, uh, in the forest and also in the rivers. So um, I thought I have to act. I was active then in a regional NGO, and I thought that is not good enough because air and water have no borders. So I joined Greenpeace in another country because I was working for the YMCA, and I thought, oh, they have Greenpeace in France and England and Netherlands, but not in Germany. So we started to cooperate with um, Greenpeace in the Netherlands and did this first action in 1980 against sulfur acid dumping into the North Sea. And you see there was a ship especially made only for sulfur acid dumping. And you saw that the fishermen couldn't fish any fish any longer because they had this cauliflower uh, illness and disease. So we were active and there was a lot of protest and people were coming up and, and protesting as well because they didn't see before that was going into the sea. And you saw that also in the river. This is the River Rhine here. And along the River Rhine, there was a lot of paper and pulp industry. And 70% of the pollution was done by the chlorine put into the uh, river through the paper and pulp industry. And you had even industries which were colorful, and you could dye t-shirts in the water, you see there. So we did also campaigns against uh, coal power plants, and that internationally, now, like now, is doing uh, Fridays for Future, we did already in 83, in eight countries at the same time, we climbed on smokestacks and protested against the uh, emissions out of the smokestacks. And all this protest had some results. The people were angry, the people were active, they wrote to their politician, and the politics did something. They did some laws, and so we had the first result to have some Emission controls, some end of the pipe technology, means filters and smokestacks, sewage plants for the water. So at least it looked a little bit cleaner. The region of the Ruhr was a little bit cleaner. But that was not enough, because we thought, if you don't change the production, you still have end of the pipe, and that is not enough. So we need other products. So the big get through was when we changed the production of paper. Nowadays, it's very normal that you have chlorine-free paper if you have not recycled paper. But at these days, everybody said you cannot have a good magazine and good photos printed if you have not chlorine paper. So we motivated Spiegel magazine through a print of a um, plagiasm to show that it is possible to have as good photos on chlorine-free paper than on chlorine paper. And now, Everybody changed, and it was possible to change, and to get also then this effluence uh, stopped, and also to change the production, which is very important. So um, I think that another problem we still have is the waste. We were talking about it before. You find it along the river, but you find it everywhere. You find it, for instance, on dump sites in cities, in incineration plants. 20% of our household waste nowadays is diapers, and diapers is plastic. And it's, you think, ah, yeah, but diapers you can't recycle. Yes, you could do something with it. You see here the diaper use of a baby for one year. Normally, a baby needs 5,000 diapers. So some people take cotton diapers. I did that when I had three kids, but not a lot of people do that. But you can change the production again. For instance, in Israel, they produced now uh, diapers, which you can use afterwards because they are from cellulose, they are biodegradable. You can use to build up forest again in the desert because a diaper keeps the water and at the same time it has also the nourishment for the new built forest. So it is possible to change the production and to make something useful out of it. So 
some people think as well that you can do with the plastic something better. For instance, out of bottles, make new sweaters, like fleece sweaters. But they don't think that you have then microplastic coming into the water directly. And as uh, we heard before, you have now the microplastic in fish, in plants, in the water, and we eat it ourselves as well. And that's not good enough. So what we have to do is to change again the production and not having these bottles made and not using kind, this kind of plastic, which you cannot reuse in the same quality. This is the important point. So another goal must be, we have the goal to have 1.5 degrees for CO2 reduction, but it's not good enough. We have to have the goal to have the same amount of C, uh, uh, C, uh, carbon in the atmosphere in the year 2100 than we had in 1900. And we have already too much at the moment in the atmosphere, so we have to get it back. And what we think at the moment is that carbon or CO2 is a pollutant, but it can be a nutrient, it can be a resource for building plastic, for instance. And you can produce also new plastics, for instance, um, nylon 6, which you can use and use and use again. So if you have materials where you need pl plastic, then you should at least use plastic which you can reuse in the same quality and not downcycle like we do it very often nowadays. Because in some uses, plastic is good. We have a lot of other materials, for instance, in houses. We have the sick building syndrome, etc., where people get sick from. 40% uh, of the children have allergies nowadays because we are a lot in indoors and indoors we lose a lot of chemicals which are not healthy for us. And if you look at the carbon, then you see that carbon is normally um, stored in the, in the soil and we have to get it back to the soil and we have to get it back to the trees. And we need this uh, carbon also to build up the soil again so that we can produce food for the whole work. At the moment we lose so much, we need 3,000 to 5,000 times more of the topsoil which we use for producing food than we uh, reproduce. So we need to have the carbon back. And if you look, we have to for, uh, save the rainforest as well because that capture, uh, keeps uh, uh, the carbon as well. If you see the rainforest, they have 7,000 tons of uh, carbon in a hectare in a rainforest and you have only 70 tons of carbon uh, um, uh, stored um, in uh, oil palm plantation, which is normally built after you have destroyed the rainforest. So let's really fight for keeping the rainforest because it also has a biodiversity as all the plants on the animals which otherwise will be extinct. And we have so many um, plants and animals which are already extinct. How do we come to this? The solution is that we are more careful with what we, the resources of the Earth are. We have to use all the resources again. They have to be in thinking that all resources are a nutrient again. There is no waste in nature. Nature doesn't know na uh, waste. So what I uh, plea for is that we have a holistic approach in our whole consumption and production, and that is the cradle-to-cradle -cradle principle. That says we have consumption products which have to be biodegradable because they go into water or into air, for instance, detergents or soaps or even T-shirts, which are after a while destroyed. And nowadays, a T-shirt is 70% cotton and 30% and any kind of chemicals to keep the T-shirt you know, flat or keep it nice or whatever. But most of them are thrown away after a while anyway. So you have to make it in a way that they can be compostable in the end, or biodegradable. And the other big issue is that service products, these are all the technical products, it's our washing machines, cars, mobiles, computers, you know, they are from technical ingredients, from nutrients which are technical nutrients, that are metals, copper, um, but also scarce raw materials. So. They need to be in a, in a cycle that you really produce a product and work together with engineers, designers, marketing people, that they really can be produced in a way that you can dismantle them. And you need digitalization for that as well, because you have to mark these individual pro, um, components. 
So what we think is that you have the consumption from in the biological cycle, as you see it here, and you have the technical cycle where you really reuse the material in the same quality. And that's not done nowadays. We still have a lot of waste. And you see nowadays, if you order um, a bicycle, how long it takes to get it, because the raw materials are missing. So we need to think about how to design it that you can use it again in the same quality. And that is the principle of cradle to cradle. Nutrients are nutrients. There is no waste. It's not waste afterwards. It's again a nutrient. And you use only renewable energies, because then you can recycle, reuse the material again. Normally, people say it's too expensive to repair something or to put some material again into a cycle, because you need energy for that. But if you use renewable energy, then it is uh, possible to do that, because it's the sun is there, and you have 20,000 times more sun than you use at the moment. And the most important point, which we miss most of the time, is celebrating diversity. Because we need the diversity of culture, the diversity of um, plants and animals and biological diversity, because everything has a sense in this. Uh, and we saw that with the pandemic, you know, that you lost this uh, diversity. And this is so important that you um, think about in these terms I show you with a picture of a sherry tree. The sherry tree is wonderful. It's abundance. We see the blossoms, and they need much more. They have much more blossoms than they uh, need fruits afterwards or make fruits afterwards. But the sherry tree is also absorbing CO2. It is um, uh, producing oxygen. It uh, produces biomass if the, if the blossoms fall down. It supports biodiversity because it gives home for insects and birds, and it filters the airs. But also, it is so nice to look at. So we need also the, the beauty. And the beauty is sometimes missed if we, if we discuss about effect, uh, efficiency. Efficiency sometimes brings us to the idea that the best would be we only have a tablet and a glass of water when it could be filled. But that's not what the beauty is. That's not what diversity is. That's not what fun is. But people also need fun. They not only need um, uh, you know, effective, uh, efficiency. So we have to go and look also what is in a product. We have to define what is in a product, like in a good um, cake recipe. We know exactly what we put into a cake. But what we do a lot is in products that we say it is free of. For instance, breaking lining, you know. They say it's now free of asbestos, but you have no antimon in it. Antimon is not better. It gets you sick as well. And you have a lot of products like that, where you have things in it which are not healthy, and people get sick of it. So positive declaration, emphasis what is in the product. And design, make a nice design as well. For instance, this chair. This is one material. The designers, the engineers have worked together. And it's, um, you can degrade, uh, you can dismantle the product and in two minutes, and you can then either melt in the product, so the, the plastic, so that you can make new products out of it, or you can use the single issues again. An extra step would be also to have a service approach. That means that you only pay, pay per use instead of buying. And that's at least a positive sign of the European Commission with the Green Deal. Ursula von der Leyen talks about now about the washing machine, where you, and she has it from us, from cradle to cradle, where you only buy a per wash. So that means that the producer keeps the washing machine as in his ownership. He thinks, what are the best materials which I can use again and again, and how can it long last so that I don't have to repair so much because I get paid per use. And I think this is very important that we get this service approach. We have a little approach already with the car to go. I'm not so happy about it because you use more cars as if you would not have, have not a car to go. But nevertheless, it has the idea that you pay per use only. But if we come to that for all the products, all the mobiles or the computers, which we sometimes only use shortly, then we have a much better recycling rate. 
tell, tell us what the, what the recycling rate of, of uh, uh, mobiles is. From 49 elements which are in there, probably nine are recycled. All the rest is waste. Yeah, and we don't need waste. We need nutrients for our new products. So what we have to think, and that's a cultural change, is to turn everything upside down. And if you use plastic, use monoplastic. And if you use plastic, use it in a way that you can use it again. Not for everything. I agree that we shouldn't have all the fruits and everything packed in plastic. But some, of, some issues are probably important to have plastic for. So this is... We have a lot of companies are already working on that, so some of them I have put here together. And we are getting more, but we need the framework for everybody. I'm hopeful because of the European Commission, but we need it for the whole world. And the main thing in the cultural change is also education. We need education in schools, in universities, in apprenticeships, in craftsmanship. Very important because a lot of craftsmen use nice materials, but then they glue it with some kind of chemicals, for instance, windows or doors or whatever. So we have created a cradle-to-cradle -cradle NGO to bring this idea into companies, into um, science, into universities, into schools. And once a year we have a congress. This year we have three congresses because it's uh, pandemic times. We cannot have 1,000 people like we had the years before, where we bring these people together. We make workshops, we make demos, we make culture like you have here, Bela B, from, uh, it's a rock star from Germany. And, and they all work together and make it you know, fun to be there. It's like a family, and that's good. We need to have a push, we have to have a move, and that's why I say that culture is a basis for social, for ecology, for uh, economic life, and it's a basis, and we forget that. Human beings can act. Human beings are the cultural um, persons. Animals and plants can't act. They can only react. We are the ones who have destroyed the earth. We have, can only repair it. But we know how to repair it. We can do it. We can give the challenges to the engineers. We can work together with the designers. And what we need for that is not to think about to have a less big footprint, but to have a beneficial footprint, to have a good positive impact on the earth, that we are useful human beings, but not use less human beings. And I really plea that everybody thinks in this positive agenda that you can really achieve something that you can save the world and that we can have together a beneficial footprint. Thank you very much.